Hey, my friends, let's talk about bunkers. It's one of my favorite topics, honestly. I love to just research uh, bunkers and just look at floor plans. And there's so much about it that's so appealing. But there are not only just pros, but cons when it comes to bunkers. So let's talk about it. Because a lot of people ask me, man, you know, uh, should we invest in getting a bunker out in the middle of nowhere? Or should we do a, a commune, you know, and, and share the cost uh, of an underground structure? Uh you know, should we live in a bunker because times are getting kind of crazy or or what should we do? And, and there's a lot of approaches. I mean, there probably are people who actually live full time in a bunker like structure. Uh, there's probably a lot more people that actually just own them and don't live in them. Uh, there's a peace of mind, though, with having a bunker. There's there's no doubt about it. I mean, especially if it's a well stocked bunker that's private and that pretty much no one knows where it's at. That's going to give you a lot of protection against like civil unrest. But when there's not, you know, some kind of civil disorder, I mean, you can still get a lot of protection from really crazy types of weather. I mean, hailstorms, tornadoes, and in some instances, even like hurricanes, it would help you. Uh, there's just a lot of things that um, a bunker could probably, you know, provide some kind of relief for you. And so, yeah, I mean, think about it. Even like during a really hot summer day, you could go into your bunker and cool off. Uh, if it's really cold outside, depending on how deep the bunker is, you're going to probably have a pretty stable temperature that's going to be quite a bit warmer than freezing cold temperatures. So there's a lot of things about bunkers that make sense. The problem, though, is, is that these bunker systems typically are not cheap. I mean, they even the really small, small ones can be on the face of it they kind of look like they're not too bad but then when you add the delivery and the installation costs and then you put together all the supporting elements like the, the water system and the electricity and the solar panels and all that and maybe a, some kind of like alarm system and this and that i mean it can get very very expensive very expensive i've i've looked into it and it's like wow it is really even for like a little eight by twelve it just was, I mean, almost the cost of a house once you get done with everything. So very cost prohibitive. Also, the con, one of the cons that really kind of bother me is that you could get trapped down there. I mean, a lot of these bunkers have an alternative escape to get out. And it's not so much I'm worried about that, like the bunker caving in or something. I'm talking about if someone was able to find your bunker you're now trapped underground. You're basically like a rat in the hole in the ground. And, you know, it, it's problematic on a lot of levels. Um, I don't like the idea of being trapped underground. And so even though that may be unlikely, especially if you're really good at keeping yourself, you know, your, your information private and no one knows where it's at, it, it's just kind of in the back of my mind. I don't know if I would like, you know, just to think about people with guns trying to shoot through my bunker door, uh, trying to get in, and I may or may not have another way out. So it's it's kind of a, a rough situation. Also, you know, they have access possibly to your air intakes. Uh, you know, if they can find them, then they can, they can basically smoke you out of your own facility. Now, a lot of these bunkers do have ways to block that, but it just depends on your system. And that, that goes into the next part. You know, it's like, some of these bunkers, depending on the material that they use, have a limited, you know, lifespan. Some of them quite long, but some of them just don't do well. And some of them are, have materials that aren't the most healthy to be around long term. And so you have like corrugated steel, not so not so great in terms of even like safety for humans and also just over the long term. They're not really built to be made for bunkers, but a lot of people are using them. So they use these big corrugated pipes and they kind of modify them. I would not do those at all. Uh, then you have a lot of people that use these specially treated and coated uh, steel boxes that they bury and they call them bunkers. Uh, those seem to be, is, if they're reinforced well, they, they seem to be a pretty good option. Then there's other people that do deep, like, you know, like types of like concrete structures, reinforced concrete. I mean, that gets really really expensive. Uh, that's totally not viable for almost anybody out there looking to build, but you know, it is an option. And then you have people who use like fiberglass it's almost like, um, storm shelters. And I see a lot of people that are kind of like misusing the term as well. 
you know, of a bunker. When they're dipped, it's basically just uh, storm shelters that are kind of reinforced or they're encased with uh, concrete. And I'm not saying that they're bad options. I mean, there's there's some that are definitely built well. But you have to take, you know, into account of what is going on here. What what are you really buying? And, uh, you know, is it going to start cracking or is it going to break down? How watertight is it going to be for how long? Lots of things to consider. And when you look at the price and all the, the downside, while it would be awesome if you just had a lot of extra money to do one of these, even if it's a smaller bunker, I would say that there's probably going to be a lot more things that you can do with your money and resources wise to to better yourself than to do a bunker system. And I think it might even be better to have multiple bug out locations that are above ground that allow you to be mobile and be more flexible than to be just stuck at one location, which may be in a hot zone. So I think it's best overall to consider other options. I'm not saying it's not a option or a good option because it could be for you. But I think for most people financially and logistically, it may not be the best option, especially for what you can do with the money that you have. If you're trying to be you know, resourceful and thrifty, uh, bunkers are really kind of like uh, not going to be uh, on your radar uh, just because of the inherentness of, uh, of those products. So what do you think about this? You know, should you have a bunker? Do you have a bunker? Do you even want to tell anybody that you have a bunker? I hope not. So <laughs> these are the pros and cons of a bunker.